Hi, my name is David, and I'm here to show you how to brew cold brew at home. It is by far the easiest way that you can brew a large volume of coffee is cold brew. We sell these Alto cold brew filters. Love them because they make it even easier. You're gonna need a few things though. You're gonna need to have a vessel to hold it that's not necessarily airtight, but definitely doesn't let, let dust, dust, let dust in while you're brewing that cold brew. You're gonna need some good coffee. Better the coffee, definitely the better it brews for cold brew. And the type of coffee you pick, I think is more important than most people would let on. I think you want something that's not the lightest roast and definitely not the darkest roast. A medium roast is great. Something that is a natural process is always gonna be even better in my opinion. Um, and you're gonna need really good water. Once you're done, this coffee's at least 98 to 99% water. It's important and purified with electrolytes added is great. If you have mountain spring water that's got good minerals in it, that's also great. We're gonna start by um, by doing a half gallon. This is kind of a half gallon jar, maybe a little bit more, and you'll go through the whole process. And, and the way that we look at it is, um, you take that measurement and uh, you divide it by the ratio that you wanna do. And we're starting with 15. So when we do a two um, liter or half gallon batch, that's gonna be 2,000 milliliters. And I know we're getting scientific, but if you divide that by 10, you've got 200, right? So you're gonna need 200 by 10, and then um, you're gonna need uh, half again as much, right? So you're gonna need 300 total grams of coffee for a half gallon. Um, and that, that math is a little bit confusing at first, but but you get used to it. And I think I actually did that, uh, that double, right? Because you um, need it to be 150. Um, gets difficult around here, but we're gonna stick with that. Uh, <laughs> no, that would be a one to 10 ratio, right? One to 15 is half again the other way. So we're doing 150 grams for two liters or about a half gallon, right? A uh, gallon uh, is 3.78 liters and a half gallon is half that. So we're somewhere in the two range. So really, if you've got one of our fantastic fellow odes, um, I'm gonna grind it in two batches. I'm gonna do 75 now, I'm gonna do 75 another time. So um, pour this guy in, it's kind of maxing out uh, my little grounds cup. And you know what? Some people say grind coarser for cold brew. I say don't. Grind as fine as you can where you get all the ground saturated. Um, and my thought process behind that is you want to have um, as much of the coffee in contact as the water is, with the water as possible. And the smaller the ground size, the more surface area is available for uh, coffee to brew. So, you know, I'll, I'll show you um, on the camera what we're talking about. We're talking about kosher salt level grind. We're gonna go ahead and load up one of these Alto filters. Um, they're great because they are totally biodegradable. You can just throw this in your backyard when you're done, throw it on your lemon tree, uh, and you're gonna have beautiful lemons. When life gives you coffee grounds, give it to your lemon tree. That's, that's, what, uh, that's what I always say. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fill up our little Alto cold brew filter. And if you get a little bit on the counter, that's the, you know, it's the counter share, you know, and, and whiskey brewing, you got the angel share, what evaporates, and, and coffee brewing, you got, you know, you got to keep the people who clean up the uh, kitchen, hopefully it's you cleaning up after yourself, in business, right? You got to gotta make sure you got some job security for uh, the people who, um, you know, make cleaning products. They, they have souls and feelings too. So, filling up this coffee sock. Um, we settled on 100 grams for a half gallon. I'm sorry, I don't know how to do math. Um, so 100 grams, half gallon, sitting in our cute little Alto coffee filter. What a deal, you get a steal. Um, and this 
while we may have seen, you may see, may have seen this kettle on such videos as the cupping or the flare video, this does not have hot water. This is cold, purified with electrolytes added water. Um, with at Moongo, we're crazy enough that we add our own minerals to our water, and I'm actually going to pour it in to the Alto uh, cold brew little sock. And you do that at first because we're talking about doing the smallest grind in size possible while still getting full contact. Um, and this helps you with that. So just pour it until it starts to actually fill up. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cinch it closed and tie it with whatever knot you re may remember from Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Weeblos, or whatever. What is it? Awana, Awana, that was the one that uh, the church kids did. I wasn't even allowed to do that, so um, go figure. So tie that off as tight as you want, and then we're gonna go ahead and just fill this up the rest of the way. And then the only reason that you're not doing cold brew at home is because you didn't plan ahead. But guess what? This is your chance, your call to action. Plan ahead, get this Alto cold brew filter set off moongoat.com, get a bag of your favorite coffee. If you need a grinder, it's time to treat yourself. Gonna go ahead, let this sit, room temp, 20 hours, that's a good starting place. Same time tomorrow, wake up early, give yourself a small little gift, the gift of time and the gift of coffee with cold brew via Alta cold brew filters and moon goat coffee. It's that easy. I have a confession to make everybody. What you see on TV, it's not real life. And I had this cold brew sitting here waiting for me when I started filming. And I purposefully deceived you in order to sell a product. But that product is worthy of a sale. So, it's been 24 hours. You maybe threw it in the fridge. That's not bad. This is, this is in the fridge. It does extract a little less in the fridge than it would on the counter. You're gonna get a little less of a strong flavor of cold brew stay on the counter, but it's great. And I would recommend at home getting a pitcher instead of a, a, a jar. But I had this half gallon glass jar begging me to make cold brew inside of it. Pouring it into a pitcher, pouring it into a cup might be a little tricky, but we're gonna try that right now. And we're gonna tell you what's gonna be different about this cold brew versus the cold brew that you're gonna get at Moon Goat Coffee. Because as you know, we can't tell you all the secrets. We can only tell you the easiest ones to replicate at your house. So, you can take the sack out, the Alto cold brew filter, biodegradable sack, or you can leave it in and uh, let it get even a little bit stronger and see how the flavor develops over 48 hours, 72 hours, et cetera, et cetera. I'm of the persuasion that I'm gonna take it out. So, I'm gonna pull it out carefully, get those last little drips, I'll even put these last little drips back in when I'm done, just because no coffee should go wasted. So, we've got about a half gallon of cold brew right here. You can pour it as carefully. This is like uh, if you watch on TikTok that Yeet Baby, where uh, pours things into cups and misses most of it. This is my uh, my example of it. And the difference between this and the cold brew you're going to get at the stores from Moon Goat is gonna be a couple things. This won't be quite as uh, clarified, as pure as the uh, coffee you get from Moon Goat. We do a little bit more filtration than just this. Um, part of that's for keeping it stable for a longer period of time. And two, we brew a lot quicker, but we brew using like a Kyoto method, which is just spraying, sprinkling the water on carefully, whereas this is a full immersion method. Some people prefer this. This is gonna be a little bit more chocolatey, a little bit more classic, uh, sometimes even a little bit heavier in flavor, um, but a little bit different and definitely a little bit more affordable. The perfect gift to yourself during the summertime is a pack of Alto cold brew filters. And go to Target, go to Costco, get yourself a jar, get yourself a jug, get yourself a glass, ramekin that can fit a half gallon, even a liter. You do a, a liter or a quart of cold brew, you're gonna be thanking yourself the next day.
Some of the tricks to getting a little bit more out of your cold brew, letting that cold brew go a little bit further, is to agitate it a little bit. Stir that bag around every couple hours if you're doing it in the middle of the day, and then let it go overnight and sit. Because it's not just about time, it's about letting the water get in and out and out of that coffee. What you don't really realize is water is the best solvent. Water takes the stuff out of coffee that you want, but you have to let it move around in order for it to do that. In fact, I mean, it's, it's one of those things where the more you move it, the faster it's going to brew. So if you like it at 36 hours without moving it, you're going to like it at 12 hours with stirring that little bag around. Um, pouring the water into the bag so that all those grounds come in contact, that's huge. It helps it. And you can make that water hot if you wanted to, to speed up the process. It's still cold brew if you use the rest of the cold wa water cold or room temp and then even throw it in the fridge to keep it cool. Um, but that hot water at the beginning, got to be careful with it. It's easy to burn yourself, but that's going to help with extracting a lot quicker. So I'm trying to think what else we need to go over with cold brew. I think that's pretty much it. It's a gift you can give yourself gift of productivity.